Welcome to My Own Worst Enemy. It's time for another playthrough. Uh, this time I've chosen a solitaire only game. This is Cruel Necessity, the English Civil Wars from Victory Point Games. It's been a while since I've done a solitaire only playthrough and I thought we were kind of due for one and I certainly have some more coming up. So uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll um, you'll get notified of when they come out. And also the Patreon page is up, so if you'd like to support the channel, please consider signing up for Patreon and becoming a patron, and that will allow me to um, continue making the channel better and better. So this is Cruel Necessity, uh, English Civil Wars, 1640 to 1653. The designer is John Welch. And of course, the sol solitaire suitability is high and says 60 minutes per scenario. Now, there are three parts to this, this civil war. There's three civil wars that, that you play back to back. Uh, I've got it. The way it works is, and I'll get into the way everything works here in just a second, but you've got three decks of cards, one deck per civil war. So the bronze deck is for the first, then it goes to silver for the Second Civil War, and then gold for the final phase of the Civil Wars. Yeah, let's jump right on in. So basically what you're trying to do, let's look at victory first. If you notice on the map, there are these triangles. Any blue triangle is a plus one point for me. Now I'm playing as the parliamentarians. We are fighting against the monarchy, and also there's a religious aspect. So we're also uh, Puritans, Puritanism, and we are fighting against uh, Catholicism. And we also have Scotland on our side and Ireland, of course, is on the other side. And so basically what I want to try to do as the parliamentarians, I want to try to push the these three political markers. I want them to be higher than they are now. So there, if you look at the side here, it, go, it runs A through F and it repeats on my side A through F. And it's just like school. Well, the way school used to be. I don't know how, what kind of grades they give out now, but when I went to school... A's were good and F's were bad. So I want to push these top markers up to A's. And if you'll note on the board, that will give me less of these red triangles. So that's good. And if I take my markers, my three markers, and push them up to the A level, I'll get more of these blue markers. So that's plus one point per blue marker. On the map, there are also red and blue triangles. So if you look, and let's see if I have my, um, I was looking for the rule book, but we'll get that in just a second too. If you look on the map, th there's four armies. There's one over here in Ireland. There's one in uh, the western part of um, England here, and I was looking for a region. I don't think they actually give region names. There's a northern army in uh, the north part up here, and then there's Scotland all the way up to the far north. So four armies, and basically they're converging on London, which is here. So if you lose London, it's game over. I do not want to lose London. Now there are some things I can do to slow those armies down. You can see that there are forts on the map that I can use to slow them down, and we'll go through how that works as we play. Uh, any blue fort is uh, mine, and any red fort is uh, the monarchy's. We definitely want to look at maybe flipping these to blue at some point if we can. There is a deck of cards. Like I said, the cards will drive what happens each turn. We will go into that as soon as I pull the first card. And while I'm talking about cards, I will mention that I did print out, there's five errata cards. Let's see if I can grab one. I just printed out these five errata cards. They're for achievements. The uh, achievements that I can purchase will go up here. And these are just kind of up here to remind me to look at the errata for those five. Should they come up? And we hope they do. So how do I actually do these things? I get something called zeal points. And with these zeal points, I can take actions. And I have I have the rule book. I, I do have the rule book. And I have also, let's see if I can grab it, a player's aid card. There are some optional rules, which I will not be using. And of course, I printed out this um, cheat sheet, uh, player's aid off of Board Game Geek from, it looks like, S. McDougall. So check that out if you, if, you, if you get this game. This is really helpful in stepping through what you need to do each phase. And the optional rules, briefly, uh, like I said, I'm not using any of these. There's even an optional rule for quick combat resolution. And the way combat works is if we get into, uh, if we pull a card that has two certain symbols on it, and I'll show you what those are, then tactical combat occurs immediately. And we will come over to this board and we will fight out tactical battles, and depending on what happens with those tactical battles, it will influence what's going on on the board, or it may have other positive or negative consequences for us 
on the main board. <laughs> so uh, the optional rules actually provide for a quick combat method, which I've looked at and I think is absolutely a waste of time if you play this game because there's a lot of theme here and playing it out on this tactical battle map, it, it's just a whole lot more fun to me. And I think you're, you're gaining more from actually going through this. You're getting to do uh, more things that you would not be able to do if you just roll these dice. And basically that's all you're doing here for quick combat resolution. You're rolling dice. So, you know, why do that? Why even play the game if you're just going to roll dice? Do this. This is, this is actually, I've done this a couple of times. This is actually pretty cool the way this works. What else? So yeah, we do have, when we go into a tactical battle, we'll have some, these battle event cards, which may come out depending on what we pull for our units. Um, and I do have, so normally the units will go here. There's a force pool here for the monarchy and a, a force pool here for the parliamentarian for the parliamentarians here. And so what I've done is I'm just going to use two. Let's see, we've got the, if I can look in here and see, we've got the monarchy in here, parliamentarians or my units in here. And I'll just randomly pull as we go from those cups because it, it gets kind of messy when you're trying to, to control what's going on here. And I'll show you that when we get there. What else? Uh, the units that are out on the map face down, we will randomly draw. These are the cavalry units. Royalist cavalry pool here and a parliamentary pool is over here. Again, I'll show you how that works. There's some counters up here that will come into the game through events or as these strength markers and die roll modifiers. I will mark pieces on the board or on this board to show that there is a plus or a minus um, modification to the die roll should that occur. There are two foreign armies over here uh, there, and I'm not quite sure what those do yet because I have not actually had those come into the game. And it may be something that happens in either, either the second or the third civil war. I don't plan on going past the first civil war, which is a pretty, pretty good stack of cards. And actually I may not play an entire game. I may just play a few turns of this. One of the things I am going to look for feedback on is if you guys like watching an entire game played out over a month or two or three, or would you rather just see a few turns and then have me move on to something entirely new? Also, I do have a live chat coming up pretty soon. I'll probably ask the same question to see what kind of responses I get. So like and subscribe to get notification of when that's coming up. And I suspect hopefully that'll come up within a week or two. I'm hoping to do the first live chat. So watch for that. I, I really think that's it. I think it, it's there's not a lot to the game piece wise and rules wise. The rule book, I did not do an unboxing of this. Um, I was waiting on that. There's a second edition of this stuck in limbo somewhere. I was waiting for that to come out before I did an unboxing and playthrough, but I don't know if we'll ever see that. that. I understand that it's complete. It's just sitting somewhere until the, the rights are sorted out. Victory Point Games doesn't, I, I don't know if they sold this to somebody else or someone else bought out Victory Point Games. I don't know. It's in legal limbo. So the rule book is kind of small. It is very colorful, glossy paper, and I highly recommend that you do use the player's aid if you, uh, if you play this game, because th this just does a better job of summarizing your actions that you can take and um, what happens in each phase. So I highly recommend you, you definitely download that if you're going to play this game. And hopefully you will, because like I said, it is a fun game. Uh, it is States of Siege, and I guess the best way to learn it is we'll just jump right in and I'll explain more as we go. So when you set the game up, the rules will tell you where to place your political markers. I've already placed them, and basically it's anywhere there's a circle. That's where these, these will start. The forts, it'll tell you what position to put the forts in. The way the forts work is they'll kind of click up or down as things happen to them, good or bad for you. And the armies are, have certain strengths. You've got threes over here. This northern army is four. This western army is four. That's it. Not a whole lot parts and piecewise. So let's just let's dive in. So when you start a game, the first card will always be the same. You'll always start with this prologue and I'll let you read the prologue. Um, can you see that prologue? I'll let you read that prologue uh, on your own. You can pause it and read it there if you want. I'm not gonna read it. I'm gonna try to speed this up as much as I can. On the bottom is card 27. It's always the last card. So that's at the very end of the deck. So we won't see that for quite some time. <laughs> so the way it works is, uh, and there is a, let me bring up the player's aid card again. So there is a sequence of play. It's very simple. We'll have the event phase, which is where we will pull a card and go through the events on that card. There is the action phase, which comes after that, which is where we will spend our zill points to take actions on the board. And then there's the end times phase, which 
you look basically for victory uh, conditions. Have you lost London? Are there four or more F grades on the board? You've lost is all it's saying there. And then housekeeping is just we'll pull some markers off the uh, die roll modifier markers, strength markers that came out, and then we'll repeat. We'll go back to an event phase. So with that said, let's pull the first event card. And like I said, always first card's always the same. So this is what the cards look like. Let's see if I can get that on the camera. So you can see there, it says 28 August. It's got some flavor text at the top. And I do recommend that when you play this game, read everything on the card. That This game is, it, there's a lot of, the thing with these states of siege games, states of siege games, they, it's very easy to paste a theme on something. And honestly, you could probably paste any theme on this if you wanted. I don't know. I haven't really thought about trying it, but I'm sure you could. But what makes these states of siege game makes them a good game is if if they're very good at creating atmosphere and the flavor of whatever they're addressing. And in this case, it is the English Civil Wars, and they do a very good job with the flavor text and with with the with the components and with what's going on in the game. So do take the time to read those. I'll just kind of fly through here. Once you start playing this, it's easy to do that. So what what happens is when you draw an event card, start at the top and you will you will go from top to bottom and then in each band will go um, left to right. So it'll it'll take you through what's happening in each phase. So let's start with the first one. Like I said, there's flavor text at the top and the dates don't pay too much attention to the dates. They will not be completely in chronological order. There's going to they're going to flip around. So it's more just kind of flavor for the game. So if we look, we've got one of these pike units and if this were red and there were, I think it's a cannon or a cavalry, if, if there were two units and they were red, we would immediately put this card down and go into a tactical battle. And I'll show you how that works when it comes along. So what's happening here is we have the, basically this is the army phase. So this is where we're going to move our armies and things will happen over here. So what this Scotland flag means is you will take the army of Scotland here and it will take an action. And so what action will it take? And I'll put this over in the discard pile face up as we go through here. So, and like I said, this cheat sheet will tell you, you know, well, this, this first part's going to tell you what I just told you, how, you know, go through each one and do what it says. So I'm looking for activate invading armies. So remember, these armies are marching down towards London. So Scotland, there's this particular order and, and what Scotland's army will do. So it's all the way up here in area number five, the Highlands. It's going to start working its way down towards London. So you start in order. So first you look to see, can it recover from disorder? So if you look at the army of Scotland, it is, it's face up right now because it hasn't been damaged. If it were disordered, you would flip it and it would look, I don't know if I can get it right side up. It would look like that on the board and say disordered. So this is the first thing you look for. Is it disordered? If it is, you flip it and that's its action for the turn. Well, in this case, it's not. It's full strength. So we go to the next thing, and it says um, combat a clubman revolt. So, you know, the clubman revolt marker, none of those are out. So if it were in a region with one of those markers, that's the second possible action it could take if it didn't take recover from disorder. Third is besiege a parliamentary fortress. So if the army of Scotland were down here, then, and it weren't, and it didn't do any of these other first two things, then it would besiege this fortress. It's not, it's up here in the highlands. There's nothing there. So we go down to the final thing it can do, which is advance on the map. And so what it does is it will advance to the lowest area that it can, or down one area lower from where it started. So it's going to start from the highlands five and work its way down to Edinburgh four. So it's marching into this, this area. And this fort is in area number four. So it's already at this fort. So that is it for this first bar. And there could be multiple, I mean, there could have been multiple armies. There might have been three armies on here that, that all could have taken that same thing. And you would do each one separately because they were on that card. But since there's only one item here, we go down to the next bar. And this one is, and again, there's some flavor text there. It's, um, what does that say? It's hard to read and hold it up at the same time. Basically, it looks like a religious book was put out that the Scottish bishop strongly opposed. So the monarchy is going to go down one. So but what that means is that's not good for us. So the monarchy political marker 
drops one. So it's in three now, or four now, it's going to drop down to four again, but now it's only one away from, it's in D, it went from C to D. It's only one away from F, so not good. And when it crosses this yellow line, this yellow hashed line, bad things will happen. So here it would cause revolts and devil tree markers would get stronger and they'd go from two to three and you would flip it. But we'll, we'll see that <laughs> as it happens and it will happen. So we've completed, we moved our army, first bar. Second bar, we've brought our monarchy political marker down one as instructed on the second bar. That's all that's there, no other actions. So we go down to this third bar and there's some more flavor text there. So it's the Scottish Church signs covenant to reject the books of common prayer. So Parliament will get a plus one die roll modifier on top of it. So that's us. We'll take one of these plus one die roll modifier markers and put it on Parliament. Now that's good for us because the way this works, I can spend zeal points to try to push these markers up. So it would cost one zeal point to roll a d6. And what I want to do is I want to roll higher than whatever the number above the political marker is. In this case, it's a three. So normally I would need to roll a four, five, or six to move this marker up. This die roll modifier gives me a plus one to that. So I would have to roll a three, four, five, or six to do that. So that's actually good for us. That's it. That's the only thing on that card, card one, and it, we're done with it. So it stays in the discard pile. That's the entire event phase. Draw a card, go through the actions, and that completes your event phase. Then we move on to the action phase, and this is where I will spend zil points to do actions. You start with five. You don't have to spend all of your zil points. You can carry zil points over to the next turn. You can carry them all the way up to nine. You'll see right off that's not a good idea because <laughs> really, you won't have enough zil points. There are times you might want to do that. And the only thing I can think of is if you want to buy like an achievement, you know that, you want to hold on to some zil points to, to try to do that. But it is really hard to save zil points in this game. So let's pull this player's aid sheet back out because it has a very good walkthrough of what you can do with your action points. You can do something called Infuse Zill. So it says pay one Zill point to place a plus one Zill influence marker on any on map unit. So there's this Zill marker. It has plus one strength on one side and it has plus one DRM on the other side. So the plus one DRM, I could spend a Zill point and put this marker on any onboard unit that I want. So in other words, I could, if I wanted to try to raise Puritanism up this turn and I knew that, I could spend a zeal point and put this plus one marker on this unit. I could also put it on this one. I could also put it on this one. You'd want to put this on a unit that you know you want to move. So that's one thing I can do and that's what this says. Next says purchase an available achievement. So when we get to achievement cards, and like I said this is my errata cards, but they look just like this only they're in color and nicer. There'll be some achievement cards up here so I could Spend a zill point to um, or a zill point to purchase one of those cards, and you know they'll have blue triangles. They'll buy me victory points, so that's good. Too early for that. Can't do that yet. We can campaign against an army or a devil tree marker. So these armies are coming down, so we can campaign against any of the ones we choose, and works the same way kind of as the political markers. If I want to attack the army of Scotland, it's a strength three, so I've got to roll a higher than a three to push the army back, or to, if, if, if it's all the way back, we can flip it to its disordered side. Um, we can also besiege a royalist fortress or crush a royalist revolt. So in this case, I could spend a zill point to crank up one of my parliamentary force fortresses. So I could go from two to three by spending a zill point. And that's important because it slows down these advancing armies. We can fortify, let's see, we just talked about that, fortify the uh, fortress. Engage in politics, that's where you, you try to pay a zill point to push these up. And then we can declare desperate times for each marker once per action phase. You can only do this once. You can lower Puritanism marker by one space to gain one zill point. So I can voluntarily say, you know what, I'm going to drop uh, Scotland down to, to the D level and give myself a zill point. Uh, I've never done that. <laughs> There's times I've wanted to. So that is something else you could do. So with that in mind, let's see, what do I want to do? I think since 
we have this plus one die roll modifier on our um, parliament marker. I think I'm going to take advantage of that. And so I, of course, am blue. The monarchy is red. So to I want to push this marker up. So to do it, I'm going to spend a zeal point. It takes us down to four. And I'm going to roll this d6. So I've got to get, normally it would be a four, five, or six because that's a three. But I've got this mod, die roll modifier. So three, four, five, or six, and we push it up. So this is my first zeal point, And we get a three. So that's good. So three plus one is four. It's greater than three. So I move this unit or this marker, political marker, up from D to C. Excellent. What else do I want to do? I think I'm going to spend another zeal point and I'm going to try to push the army of Scotland back from area four to back into the highlands. So it works the same way. I roll a D6 and I've got to get higher than a three to succeed. So a four, five or six to push the army back. That's a five. So that succeeds. So we push this army back up into the highlands. That's good. Now I'm going to going to spend another zeal point and strengthen. I'm going to strengthen the fortress in Edinburgh. So I'm going to spend a zeal point. It takes us down to two. And we rotate this up one. So it goes from two to three. So this is good because when this army gets back to or any army gets to a fortress that's mine, blue, parliament, they have to they, they have to besiege that fort before they can advance any further. And they can flip it to their to red. So that's something we have to look out for too. So this will slow the armies down. The higher the number, the better. And actually, I think, well, let's see. Dublin is red. I can't do anything about Oxford. There's and it tells you on the board, cannot besiege Oxford until either card 13 or 26 comes out. And then I can start trying to chip away at this fort. I could try to do something to Dublin over here. I could try to besiege Oxford. I think I'm also going to increase Bristol though. I'm going to spend another zeal point and I'm going to push Bristol up to three. So I have one zeal point left to spend. I could try to attack one of these two armies again. Uh, they're both in their highest numbered area. So if, I, if I'm successful, it would actually flip them to their disorder side, which again would slow them down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to spend my final zeal point and try to flip Ireland to disordered. So I'm looking for a four, five, or six again. I got a five. That's good. So that's going to flip them to disordered. It's going to slow them down. That's what we want to do. And I'm at a zeal points. That's all I can do for the action phase. That is it. So we look at the sequence of play and we go to end times. If you don't control London, which I do, I still have London. So that's good. Now, if we have four F grades, like I did in elementary school, <laughs> we don't have four Fs. So that's good. Um, and also, if you completed event card number 60, which you know, we're, we're, we're only in the first civil war here, so we're not worried about that either. So that's it. Just basically a victory check. Nowhere near that. So we go right into housekeeping. Remove all temporary strength markers. Don't think anybody had a strength marker, no. Or and DRM. So we did have a DRM. That comes off in the housekeeping phase. And then gain zeal. So the way gain zeal works for every um well, let's see, make sure I'm doing this right. So for every um for certain fortresses that I own, I will get zeal points. And here we go. So gain zeal points. And I forgot right off the bat. So if you control London, and it says right there on top of the little marker, you're on London, you get three zeal points. So that's one, two, three. So that's three for controlling London. Then you get plus one for control uh, for each control of Hull, Oxford, and Bristol. So I control Hull. I don't control Oxford, and I do not control Bristol. So that would have been one, two, three three zeal points. But because I do not control Oxford, it's only two zeal points. So I get two more for that. So that takes me up to five. And then if Catholicism were all the way at the top of the track, which is really good for me, I would gain a zeal point. And opposite of that, if Puritanism were all the way down, 
the bottom of the track, I would actually lose a zill point. That would be bad for me. So you can kind of see where why we started off with five zill points. Nothing really has changed. We have London, three, and Hull, and Bristol, four, five. And then that's it. We go right back into the event phase. So you simply pull another card. So let's do that. And we pull another card. And it is, again, flavor text is at the top. And it just so happens that we get Scotland again. So we go back through the same. Let's see, put that down. Kind of sucks that it was Scotland again, but it's going to happen a lot in this game. So basically, go back to your, you know, what actions can an army do? And I'm looking at the action phase. I don't want to look at that. So number one, can it recover from disorder? No, it's not disorder. So it's the same thing we just saw. The, the next thing, the only thing it can do is advance. So it's going to come down back to Edinburgh here, num at area number four. And then we have this unrest in London. And so unrest in London is bad because what that means, there's unrest in London and it is a royalist immediately conduct a normal 2d6 siege against London. However, London can never be reduced to zero in this manner. If it is down to zero, you'll start losing zil points. So this is not good for us. So it's the way a siege works is they will get to do this twice. And this, uh, what they're doing is right now, currently London is at a two. So they've got to roll a two or three or higher, I believe it is. That's a siege. Let me check this. A siege is normally, and everything in this game, I'm pretty sure is you're trying to roll above of what number you see on the board. And, and here it is. So you roll D6 twice, apply each result separately. And for each result where it is greater than the current strength, it happens. So in this case, they're looking to roll higher than a two. So let's go ahead and do the first one. Do they succeed? They roll a three. They do succeed. So this will take this down to two. That is not good. And they get to do it again. So they can do this twice every time they siege. And what is that? A three. So they get to do it again. So it's on zero now. And I think it said, <laughs> can never be reduced to zero. So I take that back. So what happens is, is it can't be reduced to zero. I lose a zil point. So that's bad. That's very bad. And we go back to the card. So again, remember it's top to bottom, left to right. So we did Scotland moved, unrest. And then we go to our next, our religious part of this card. And Puritanism is going to drop. So basically, Puritanism is here. It gets all the way down to two. And I don't know if... I think when they cross this line, they have to flip. Let's make sure. Um, no, so it's, only, it's only if they get to the extreme here. So if they came down to this bottom part, they would flip. And when you flip them, bad things happen. Lose one zil per turn. So that's not good. That is not good at all. And oops, where'd my card go? I'm like, wait a minute, I'm looking, <laughs> I've seen that card before. So that was that middle part of the card, Puritanism fell. And then we look at the very bottom, the final thing on the card, the event card, Parliament announces plots by Jesuits and threats of invasion by France. Oh, this is actually good. We get a zil point back, plus one zil point. So right back up to five. So that that kind of balanced out the uh, the siege of London here. All right, so that's it. That's that's another complete turn. So I'm going to stop it here for now. Um, if you uh, like what I do, please consider liking and just subscribing. And if you really want to support the channel, check out the Patreon page. It is linked below, and I would appreciate any help you can offer. All right, that's it. Uh, as always, I thank you for watching, and I will see you back here next time.